We just got finished having our kitchen renovated, and whilst there are a few minor things left to complete, there was one key thing missing. Smart lighting. Initially, my plan was to install under-counter LED strips along these two separate sections of my kitchen. But then I thought, why not run them along the top of the cabinets too, to provide more light and allow me to create some really cool effects. I started by measuring the space under the cabinets so I knew how much LED strips to buy, as well as the length of the aluminium channels. There are a few different versions of LED strips you can purchase with varying colors, different amounts of LEDs per meter, voltages and addressable versus non-addressable. But the one I settled on was the SK6812, which is a five volt RGBW strip, meaning it has a dedicated white channel along with the regular red, green and blue channels. And it's got 60 LEDs per meter, which should provide plenty of light for this space. The left-hand cabinet measures 1.3 meters along the bottom, whilst the right-hand side is a little longer at 1.5 meters, which is 2.8 meters in total, multiplied by two for the top of the cabinets, which gives us 5.6 meters in total. LED strips are typically available in one or five meter lengths, so I ended up with two five meter lengths, as I have another small section of the kitchen that I'm going to do in the future. I also ordered these aluminum channels, as these provide a nice place for the LED strip to sit inside and make installation a little easier, but they also provide a little bit of diffusion for the light, making it a bit softer, and so you don't see the hotspots of the LEDs as much. Some LED strips are more basic and you simply need to provide power to them and they turn on. But of course, this is everything smart home. We've got to make these smart. To do that, we need some sort of controller for the LED strip that will give us all of the colors and cool effects for the LEDs, but also allow us to integrate them with our smart home. I went for a Quinn LED Dig Uno, which is a pre-assembled controller featuring an ESP32 at the center, screw terminals for easy connections, and works with five, 12, or 24 volt LED strips. You can use a regular ESP32 and roll your own, but I would highly recommend the Dig Uno or Dig Quad instead, as they make everything so easy to connect, not to mention much safer. The software we are going to be using is an amazing free open source project called WLED, started by GitHub user Air Cookie, which features over 100 special effects, is super easy to use and supports multiple different LED strips. It's free to use, runs on really inexpensive hardware, is super customizable, and you can sync multiple different controllers together so that they all behave as one, a feature that is going to be really useful for my setup. I already have power cables above my cabinets, which were used for some traditional downlighters that were in the old kitchen. So I made sure that these were left in place so that I could reuse them for this project. I'm going to use these five volt 30 amp power supplies to power the whole thing. 30 amps is a little overkill for this particular setup, but these were the ones that I could get on short notice, plus they will do for any future plans. I'm treating each side of the extractor fan as a separate installation, rather than trying to keep them all on one controller, because there is no easy way for me to get wires across it without it looking ugly. Plus with WLED, that makes it so easy to keep things in sync, and the plan is to start the LED strip at the top of the cabinet and link it to the bottom strip using the service void that I have at the side of my cabinets. Thank you to Coway for sponsoring this video. Good quality air purifiers are an excellent addition to keeping us healthy without us even barely needing to lift a finger. And what is better than an air purifier? A smart air purifier. And this is where the Coway Air Mega 300S comes in. The Coway Air Mega 300S offers maximum protection against all common household particles and is designed for large living areas with a pollution sensor which transmits air quality in real time. The controllable bright colored ring on the front will show you the air quality of your air for every minute of the day so you can get that information with just a glance. The dual filters on either side of the unit allow for maximum purification of contaminated air through its MAX2 filters, 
which is a combined activated carbon and green HEPA filter and is good for a large space of over 149 meters squared. You can also control the Koei Air Mega 300S anywhere in the world through the IO Care app, which is easy to download in the Apple Store and Google Play Store, and it has so many impressive features, which includes real-time monitoring of indoor and outdoor air quality, so you can track both of these qualities, and the outdoor air quality tracking feature is something that not many other companies implement, as well as filter notifications and the filter remaining life cycle percentage, and the schedule maintenance day with also a link to a video on how to clean the pre-filters if you require some guidance, as well as speed control and programming and intelligent modes. Check it out with the link in the video description. I started by measuring the space under the cabinets so that I could cut my aluminium channels to the correct length. These channels are available in one meter lengths, so I would be joining two together to make up the distance. Make sure to leave a slight gap at the very end as an entry point for the cables to sit neatly inside. There were a couple of different places to position the aluminium channels, either at the back pointing down or the front facing towards the back or the front facing down. We decided on the front facing down as placing them near the back may have left some visible hotspots on the wall, plus we felt the light distribution would be better at the front. After marking the LED channel with some tape and a pen, I inserted the diffusion strip into the channel and cut to size with a hacksaw. Inserting the diffusion strip now will make sure that it's cut to the exact same length, plus it will give you a neater cut overall. Then I used some VHB tape from 3M to attach the channels to the underside of the cabinets. I could have used the included screws, but I didn't feel like drilling into my new kitchen just yet. Plus the VHB tape is insanely strong and easily holds up these lightweight channels. After lining up and sticking down both sections of the channel underneath, I repeated the exact same process on the top side, ready to accept the LED strip. Starting with the top side first, I placed the LED strip inside of the channel so that I could get a look at where the best cut point would be on the LED strip. Again, making sure to leave some space for the wires to be tucked inside the channel at both the start and end point. One thing to note here is that the LED strips are directional as indicated by the little arrow on the strip. So take that into account when planning. After cutting the top LED strip to size, I soldered on a very short length of wire so that I can connect them into some waggle clips, which I will then attach to the corresponding wires from the bottom strip. The waggle clips allow me to quickly and easily connect the two ends together without soldering on top of the cabinet and makes them easy to separate in the future for troubleshooting or for swapping anything out. Make sure to add some heat shrink to insulate your connections from shorting with each other or on the channel. After sticking the first LED strip down into the aluminium channel, I measured the vertical height of the cabinets to cut some wires, which will then be used to join the bottom and top strips together. I then repeated the process and measured and cut another section of LED strip, which will be used on the underside. I'm using this LED extension wire and soldering directly onto my LED strip for the best connection. If you don't want to solder, then you can use these extension clips, which do make things easy, but they aren't always the most reliable. So I'd recommend soldering if you can. I'm soldering these connections down on the ground first before I stick the strip up, just to make things easier for myself. With the connections made for the bottom LED strip, I dropped the strip down from the top side first and started sticking it down into the LED channel, starting at the very end side first and everything lined up perfectly. Back up at the top, I pushed the wires into the WAGO connections to join it to the top strip and both sides are now connected and we can move on to the controller. WLED needs to be installed on our controller first, which takes less than two minutes due to its easy browser-based installation. It's amazing how far this process has come. Then I simply told WLED what type of LED strip I am using, how many LEDs I have and my GPIO pin, and the controller is now ready to be wired in place. With the mains power turned off, I cut the separated plus and minus wires on my top LED strip so that they would fit inside the channel and then cut the clip off the end of the three wires so that these can go right into our screw terminals on the Dig Uno. I then stripped and prepared cables for the power supply 
and using waggle connectors connected the 240 volts main voltage into the power supply and then the 5 volt output connected to the screw terminals of the DIG UNO. Finally I clipped the diffusion layer into the aluminium channel and I offset the cut pieces of plastic against the cut pieces of aluminium to provide a little more of a seamless look even though these strips should never really be seen. I then got to work and did the whole thing all over again, repeating the exact same process on the other side. Measure, cut, cut again because you weren't paying attention, measure, cut, solder, wire up the controller, wire up the power supply and install the diffuser. And now it was time for the big switch on. To my delight, the LEDs lit up just as they should, but I noticed one slight issue. The undersides of the cabinets on both sides were a little dimmer than they were up at the top, plus had an orange tinge when they were meant to be white. This is due to a voltage drop that occurs because of not only the amount of LEDs, but in my case it was mostly due to the extremely thin wire I was using to link the top and bottom strips together, which to be honest I shouldn't have used anyways in the first place due to the amount of current I'm pushing. So after replacing it with some much thicker wire, it was time to see the results. I am really happy with how these lights turned out. They are a much needed and welcome addition to this space that look fantastic, are very customizable and easily light up the room without being expensive to run. If I were to do anything different, I would probably have went for a 12 volt strip instead of a five volt strip to better deal with that voltage drop. It's not really noticeable now with the thicker wire, but there is a slight dip still, which I'll fix with some power injection. But other than that, I am really happy with the results. We barely scratched the surface on all of the cool things that WLED can do. It's a seriously impressive piece of software that has some really powerful features and makes everything so simple. I hope you enjoyed this video. Drop a comment down below of what you think of this sort of lighting and if you're thinking about doing a similar project for yourself. Or if you want me to do a full WLED guide, please do let me know in the comments. Whilst you're down there, make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed and I will see you in the next video.